And, Would you, uh, yeah. Our, you know, uh, now I guess the Iranians blew off a missile. You know, they, they showed me film, I guess, of some missile going up in the air. Do I really know they did it? I don't know. I, you know, you get to the point, especially with our news media today, that you don't know what to believe and what not to believe. Yeah, you were because telling me initially. A... Initially, you come out and they make you believe something, and then four to six months later, you learn other things that make you disbelieve what they were told you. So, when they tell me something today, I don't know whether to believe it or not. Uh, absolutely, Jesse. Um, let me bring this question up to you then. Uh, on eight eight eight, I get up. CNN says Russia has snuck attack Georgia. Then I get to the office and I'm watching foreign TV and even reading, you know, down deep in the Associated Press that Georgia snuck attack South Ossetia. And then two days later, they admitted, OK, it was all a PR stunt. NATO and U.S. troops were there advising the sneak attack on the Russians. I mean, that's how much our media and government will lie is that they will launch sneak attacks on Russian territories. Does that sound like a good idea to you, Jesse? No, not at all. You know, that uh, that sounds to me like, the you know, if I can go back in history... Is Howard Hunt still alive? <laughs> Supposed Absol to laugh, Alex. <laughs> no, I mean that sounds like the stuff they were doing to Cuba back down the, in the you know the days of the Bay of Pigs and all that stuff when 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 our CIA was down there trying to overthrow Castro secretly and making attempts and blowing up ships in the harbor and doing all that sort of behavior. It reminds me of the stuff that went on in Central America during the whole Iran-Contra stink. What we need to, what this country's got to do is pick, get its head out of its you-know-what and start realizing that there's a reason that these people don't like us out there in the world. And a lot of it's got to do with our behavior. I agree, and, and this corrupt offshore elites that are using the United States as their tool or their front man, their, their, their strong man, their engine to carry this out. Can you talk about what you, what we discussed this morning in that conversation about how you're discovering more and more stuff? You're writing a book about conspiracies, the point about, uh, Lincoln, or do you want to just not get into that? Oh, no, that's fine. I'll, I, well, the, the story I can tell you is this, you know, Dick Russell, my co-writer, he, he brought this to my attention. He sat me down and we were down together in the Baja. And and he just looked at me and he said, Governor, he said, what do you know about the murder of Abraham Lincoln? What were you taught in school? And I said, well, what I recall that I was taught in school is that Abraham and his wife went to the movie theater, the Ford Theater, and that John Wilkes Booth snuck up behind him, shot him in the head, tried to jump from the balcony, hooked his leg on something or other, broke his leg. They trailed him to a cabin and killed him, burnt him or whatever. I said, that's what I was taught. And Dick said to me, so they never taught you that there were actually seven people arrested, tried, and convicted for the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and the attempt on Ulysses S. Grant and Vice President Johnson? I said, I never heard a word about that till you told me that right now. And so what causes me concern is that, I don't know, why, aren't we, why don't we put that in our school books about what really happened, uh, that, there, that there was this literal attempt from the Confederacy to assassinate three of the top uh, union leaders, the president, the vice president, and General Grant. Yeah, the you issue know? is why isn't this put in school books, regardless of what side of this yeah. you're on? Why don't they write the truth about history? And it scares me to death to think, okay, what can you believe in our history books that our children are reading today? You know, are they going to continue to tell us that Lee Harvey Oswald killed Jack Kennedy when there's enough evidence out there that indicates if he, if he did take part in it, he certainly didn't do it alone? Well, Governor, yeah. here's another one. It is mainline history, even in uh, Shire's Rise and Fall of Third Reich, Pulitzer Prize winning. It's in all the major mainline history books, but it's never on Discovery Channel, History Channel, the news. Did you know that the British and U.S. governments actually funded Hitler, that the Edward VIII, the king, was a Nazi, had to escape Germany uh, when the war started, and that the West basically told Hitler to go ahead and do what he did, that they were going to back him, and then they turned against him? I mean, Hitler's still evil. The point is, is that that's why they let the British escape at Dunkirk and all that. That's why the Reichsfuhrer... Uh, came in and parachuted into England with a peace treaty saying, I have the peace treaty. Well, you know, why are you doing this? We had a well, deal. Uh, Alex, I have to tell you, I don't know of any of that. I have to claim ignorance. I've never studied it. I probably should. 
But, uh, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. And well, no, exactly. I'm saying you're a prominent guy. Get your rider to look into that because that's something that is mainline Pulitzer Prize. It's just, it's just in there, though, like it's no big deal. It's kind of like an elephant in the living room and nobody's, nobody's even pointing it out. Yeah, uh, you can't see the forest for the trees. Absolutely. Uh, did you okay, get enough? Yeah, no, interesting stuff. No, the book we're going to write, though, is going to deal with multiple conspiracies down through the years and, uh, you know, and, and cover them and just, uh, you know, hopefully make people think a little bit and realize because I still sit back and say, you're telling me all the assassinations of the 60s were all done by lone nuts. You know, well, that, I, I lived through then and I just can't believe that there wasn't one more person involved than who they told us. Well, it's now come out that Patty Hearst and the Weatherman, that that was all staged. That's mainstream declassified. And every time I hear about mad bombers that are about to blow something up, I was in the shower this morning with the radio on, listening to NPR, and they admitted this latest group of idiots they found in New York. They admit, oh, by the way, the informants set up the group, were leading it, and gave them the explosives. Well, again, Alex, you know more than I do on that stuff. I can't comment on it because I have no idea. Well, you're a very smart guy, and you've got a lot of courage, Jesse, and you've certainly been learning a lot of stuff I didn't know about, and you've, you've taught me quite a bit about things well, that have happened. You've got to so. remember, Alex, I t you're here all the time now. I take a leave of absence for six months. <laughs> well, I think that's good. I, th I think you deserve it after all you've done. Uh, speaking of that, uh, they keep asking you, are you going to run for the Senate? Are you going to run for governor? Are you ever going to run for office again? At this time, no, I, I don't, but I never say never because, you know, I can't predict the future. I can't predict if something would happen that would inspire me to do it again. But right now, I, I don't have the fire in my belly to go for, like, it, the Senate race, you know, it really came down to flipping a coin. I let destiny determine it. But the other main reason was I thought about, you know, at, at my age now, that six years of my life that I got to go hang out with people I don't even like. Yeah, now they it's, are. It's difficult to do, you know, at this point in my life. I don't, I've only got so many more years on the planet. You know, I'm closing in on 60 years old, and, and I want to enjoy myself. And to go out there and hang around with them people for six years, that would be like, you know, why don't I just go put myself in prison? MySolarBackup.com. A lot of things can cut off your electrical power. Hurricanes, snow, ice storms, uh, global warming, gremlins can chew off your electrical wires. Uh, a lot of things can happen. And so instead of sending all your money to Al Gore and carbon taxes, I suggest you take uh, the, your own power needs out of the control of that control freak and go to MySolarBackup.com. Uh, the degenerate control freak, uh, blood-sucking parasites of government, the New World Order, don't own the sun yet, folks. So make your move now. MySolarBackup.com, the great power source, 1,800, 1800 watts of power on demand. The solar panel, the system, the, the uh, charger, the batteries, all of it. Great little system. Get a bunch of these on your whole house. MySolarBackup.com, 877-327-0365, 877-327-0365.